Y'all, I don't know if I'm getting pickier or makeup is getting worse and I'm just having higher standards, but we have a lot to talk about today. We are going to cover my Sephora haul from the sale and do a first impressions on every single product. It's actually what I have on my face today, so we're gonna go through each and everything, especially if it's something that you added to your cart from my Sephora sale wishlist video. I definitely wanna get your opinions on that. Um, hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy, thank you so much for being here. And I just have a lot to say today. I have tested a few of the products from my haul, which if you wanna know what I picked up and what I was interested in before we go through this video, I have my wish list video also linked into the description below where I talk about each of these and sort of like why I'm interested in purchasing them. And in this video, we're gonna go through each one, try them on and kind of give like initial impressions. A few of these I have used more than once so I can give you like a more solid thought on it. Um, but we have a lot to say, good and bad, but like I would say more bad, which sucks. Also, um, this is my first video back that I'm filming from Coachella and somehow my body is still like dealing with it. I still feel kind of stuffed up. My boogers are still a little bit black and I went and got a hydrofacial and got everything sucked out of my face, but I have a bunch of uh, shorts talking about my Coachella experience if you want to watch those, but all in all, it was really, really fun. I am just absolutely exhausted. And um, would I do it again? Yes, but it would have to be sort of the same way I did it this year because it was crazy and I am old and I can't hang like I used to. Anyways, if you are new here, I would love for you to subscribe. We talk about skincare, makeup, Sephora, Ulta, fashion. We kind of do it all and I would love to have you subscribe. Oh. Okay, so we went in order today of how I did my makeup, so we're just gonna go in that order to talk about each of these products. A lot of these products are new from some of my favorite brands. Like I said, if you didn't see my wishlist video, I would definitely go watch that one before this just so you can get a good feel on how I feel about a lot of these brands and launches. So let's just dive in first with something that has been heavily promoted on TikTok and online recently. That is the Kosas Dream Beam Comfy Smooth Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 40. Let's see, I wanna make sure I have all the info here and pricing and all of that jazz for you. This is a $40 sunscreen. It has 1.3 fluid ounces in it and this is a mineral untinted sunscreen. I was really, really excited about this as I talked about in my last video because I have been waiting for Kosas to come out with something good for a little while now. The past couple launches they've had besides their foundation launch have been flops for me and I think this one might be a flop as well, unfortunately. When I first put it on, this is the third time I've used it. The first time I put it on in my bathroom, I had waited a little bit between my moisturizer and putting this on. So I was putting it on dry skin and I noticed it immediately pilling which is not a good thing, especially if you are a person who likes to layer your skincare and your makeup. You don't want pilling, which is like when you rub your skin, little itty bits of the makeup and the, the skincare and your skin start to ball up and you can literally pull it off of your face. It's very uncomfortable, it looks bad, it gets in your hairline. It's not a fun thing to experience with sunscreen and it's not something I usually experience with mineral sunscreens. So off the bat, I was like, oh damn, this really sucks. When I do my skincare in the morning especially, I just wanna slap it on and go. So I really don't like the idea of something being really finicky. So anyways, I used it again and I used it directly after I put on my moisturizer so my skin was still damp with moisturizer and it didn't pill at all. So I was really excited about that and then the third time I used it today, there was again time between my moisturizer and sunscreen. And by the way, I was just using the FutureWise moisturizer, nothing crazy. It had already sunk into my skin for a good 20 minutes. And then I put this on and again, you can see in the try on, pilling especially around my jawline it sits in my hair i still have some here and it's just a little unfortunate i've also talked to a few other creators who had pilling with this product which really stinks because the finish is very nice and the ingredients are great there is uh peptide ceramides hyaluronic acid allantoin all good things to have in a sunscreen this is totally great for sensitive skin I would say the finish is almost like the Say sunscreen if you've tried that, but the pilling alone is going to, I don't know, keep me from wanting to use it when I know there are other mineral SPFs out there that don't do that. So I don't think I'm going to return it, but I do think 
I'm not going to be using it quite as much as other mineral SPFs in my life and it stinks because I really wanted to like this. However, also for $40, that is just so freaking steep for an SPF and I know that times are tough right now so I don't know if I could fully recommend this to you as I would other mineral SPFs like my say Sun Visor or Elta MD or the Summer Fridays. I like it but I don't love it and that is my take on the dream beam. And you're gonna hear that sentiment a lot throughout this video, the I like it, don't love it sentiment, including with this next product, which I still feel like I need to test out before I give you a full, full review. Again, this is more first impressions, but it's a product I was really, really excited about in my wishlist video, and that is the Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow Skin Tint. This is an SPF 30, and this is also, I believe, a mineral SPF inside of a skin tint, which is pretty unusual when it comes to skin tints. I think, you know, most of them are uh, chemical sunscreen based. I, I know Tower 28 and Say, I think, are both mineral based. And this has watermelon and apple extract as well as hyaluronic acid. It says that it's 24 hour wear and vegan, which like nobody's wearing their makeup for 24 hours. Can we just stop with that? I'm tired of that. But as you guys know, in the other video I mentioned, I love the concealer that goes with this product. So I was really excited to see how this would wear. Today is the absolute first time that I have put this on. So like I said, fully first impressions. And I think I like it. I think I like it. So when I put it on immediately, I put on as much as I would my Summer Friday skin tint, which is my absolute favorite skin tint on the market, and it was too much. It has more coverage and has a more satin finish than I was expecting. I was expecting something lightweight and glowy similar to the concealer, when in fact, it's more of a medium coverage to satin finish skin tint, which is something different and interesting and could be fun for the summer. I think that the finish at this point looks really good. It's been sitting on my skin for probably half an hour now and it looks pretty flawless. The color match is perfect for me in the summer. I'm in the shade light beige. This one is $42 and you are getting two ounces, which is pretty good. I am very interested in continuing to wear this and test this out. So come back and I will give you a full update on this. I am going to do a skin tint video showdown soon. It's just that's gonna take a lot of time because I love skin tints and you guys know I'm very particular about skin tints. So this is currently still a maybe for me. Upon first impressions when applying it, I was not liking it as you can see, but as it has sat on the skin, I think it looks really flawless and more like a foundation than I was expecting. So I'm excited to continue to try this out. I know that it has a lot of mixed reviews and I'm just trepidatiously saying that it's a yes. You know, so take that with a grain of salt, trepidatiously saying it's a yes. Something that I am saying is a yes with my full chest that I am truly really much enjoying and is probably the, my favorite thing out of this entire haul is the Glowish by Huda Beauty Concealer. I'm so glad that this worked the way that I wanted it to. I really, really like this. So this is the Bright Light Sheer Concealer from Glowish by Huda Beauty. Glowish is, I think, like, it's within the Huda Beauty brand, but it's also like the lighter weight version of Huda Beauty's typical product line. They have a Glowish skin tint, which I actually am not a huge fan of. It's been a couple years since I've tried it, so I might be interested in trying it again, but it has a thicker consistency to it, and it is, dare I say, too glowy for me. And I am a person who likes a glowy finish, but it was pretty much like wearing the Hollywood Flawless Filter as a skin tint and I do need a little bit of help with my pores and that was just not doing me any favor. So I was a little nervous about this concealer but when I saw it on Trend Mood I knew I wanted to try it and I really, really do like it. This is a sheer concealer. I wear shade Light 3 and it is a great shade match for me. I'm very glad that I was able to shade match myself pretty much throughout this whole video. This is a $27 concealer. It's on the pricier side for sure. All makeup is expensive these days, especially if you're buying from Sephora. So I would say it's probably in that range that I'm used to purchasing at, unfortunately. This has a six month shelf life and I really enjoy it. I think that it gives a nice sheer brightening coverage to the skin, perfect for everyday wear. I would not say that this would be great for like going out if you are a person who likes a fuller coverage. I don't know how well this will pair with full coverage foundations. I'll have to test that out, but with this skin tint, I think it looks really nice. It kind of helps 
bring a little bit of brightness to the under eyes. I am tired right now, so you know, keep that in mind. I always have this sallowness under the eye and I'm used to that. So to me, I'm testing this concealer based on the way it looks and feels on the skin. I have a lot of things that I need for a concealer to be considered good in my eyes. And if you are a person like me who likes a lighter coverage, for it to look glowy, that you don't need to set it, but you could also set it with powder, which we'll get into, I think you'll like this. If you tend to like what I like and you're interested in a lighter coverage concealer for the summer, I think you might like this one. I'm so glad I picked that one up. All right, next up on the docket, what I used, and also, God, I'm realizing my allergies are so bad, I'm getting a pock on my lip, and I'm like, is this from the lip oil I have on? Which we'll get into. Ooh, we'll get into that. This one is a no from me, dog. Um, This one is a no from me, dog, and probably a return. This is the Freck Beauty Face Hack. Um, and no, it's not a chapstick. <laughs> I know you probably think it is, but it's not. It's a bronzer. Okay, where to begin? So I had no idea it was gonna be this small. This has 0.13 ounces of product. And a bronzer is something that you use or I use every single day, no matter what. This is $18. And let me just do like a little comparison with my favorite bronzers, you know what I mean? So here is the Say Beauty bronzer. This has uh, one full ounce of product and um, it is probably around the $30 price range. This has 0.13 ounces of product in it. And I just feel like for a product style that you use all the time, it just, I don't know. And I've also said in the past, like I wouldn't hate having smaller products from brands and that is true. So I'm not trying to like, say that I hate this, but it's more of like the pricing for the size. I don't know. It's just giving me like kitschy kid makeup size. I don't know. Um, this is considered a precision sculpting bronzer and I have mine in the shade medium tan, which is listed as golden warm undertones. Again, this is $18. It has pretty good reviews on Sephora's website, but this one is just not for me. Um, the shade is incredibly warm. It's too warm for me. It's giving spray tan on my skin tone because I have an olive skin tone and this really, really warm orangey shade is just giving me straight up spray tan. I prefer a bronzer that has, I like the reddish undertone to a bronzer, but I prefer it to be pulling more neutral brown, like straight up brown than to have that orangey undertone. It's also got a sort of cream to powder finish to it, which I don't really love with other cream products. I think that it ends up looking a little bit too diffused and it can turn a bit muddy if you're not careful with it. Um, it's very, very matte. And the way that I typically like to apply cream products, which is applying it to my hand and then using a brush on my face, doesn't necessarily work with this product. You do need to apply it directly to the face and blend with a brush, which works fine. I just don't like it. And that's the honest truth. I don't like the undertone for me on my skin tone. Um, if you like a super warm bronzer, I think you might like it. I also just don't like how matte it is. I prefer something that has more of a satin natural finish when it comes to a bronzer. Think Tower 28 Sculptino Say Beauty Bronzer. It's just a little bit too matte for me and I don't know um, that the staying power is worth it. In my opinion, I did see that they answered someone on TikTok saying you can get like 300 swipes out of it. So I have no doubt this would last a while and I think that is intriguing in some capacity, but for a product I would use every single day, I was just not a fan um, and that's okay. And that is okay. Honestly, I haven't had good luck with any of the Freck products. I don't love their, um, their blushes either, so I don't know. I just don't know if me and Freck were meant to be and that is okay. Next on the docket, next on the docket. Gosh, a lot of the stuff that I had in my cart is sold out. So I hope some of you guys got your hands on these things. Um, let's see if I can find this one. This is the new Refi Brow Tint Eyebrow Gel. It has five full stars on Sephora's website, 15 reviews, $24 and you are getting, um, eight milliliters, 0.27 fluid ounces. This has more product in it than the bronzer. <laughs> so if you know Refi, you know that they are known for their eyebrow products specifically, and then also some lip products. So they have their brow sculpt and shape. They have really popular eyebrow products and as, as well as long lasting lip products. I've talked about them before. They also make tiny, tiny little blushes, 
but I'm more interested in their brow products than anything. And when I saw this, I had to buy it specifically because of the wand. As you can see, this is a super tiny little ball wand. A lot of people thought that this launch when seeing the uh, container was going to be a freckle. It's not. Speaking of, I have mine on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My freckle pen is launching this summer. Just a little reminder. <laughs> And it's good, y'all. It's real good. Anyways, back to it. I, again, am having a like this, don't love it feeling about this product. Um, this is a water-based eyebrow tint. I got mine in shade medium brown. All of the shades pull cool, unfortunately. I was hoping for one warm shade because my hair is dyed red and I like a warmer like match to my eyebrows. But this stuff holds your brows like so insanely good. Um, the problem that I have with it is that because it's so watery, it's a bit messy upon first application and it kind of gets everywhere. And then once it sets, it sets. So it's kind of all over my eyes. It doesn't really like push them in place because there's no hold originally, if that makes sense. Like because it's a water-based product, there's no hold when you're putting it on. The hold sticks after the fact. So if you have more coarse brows that don't like to go in place unless you have a nice like thick gel, this is not gonna be for you. This is more for people who have very thin wispy brows or maybe laminated brows like I do at the moment that go where you want them to go with minimal effort and then it'll stay in place all day. But if you are a person who needs to push your brows in certain directions, use a wax, things like that to get them to set where you want them to go. This will not be for you because it is just too thin and malleable to begin with. That being said, with my brow lamination right now, I do like the way it looks because I am able to put them where I want. My left brow is my good brow. It looks amazing. When I put it on with my right brow, it took much more work. If you, again, like have those brows that need to be put into place, it ends up being a bit finicky, messy, but the final result, if you can get it there, is really nice. Again, this is $24, typical, I would say, for what we're seeing in the market right now. I do like this. I am going to keep it and continue to use it. I could see this being great in the summer. I like that I don't have to apply anything underneath it and it sets. I like the crunchy brow. I've talked about that before. If you don't like the crunchy brow, you're not gonna like it, but I do like it. I don't love it, but I like it. Theme of this video, I guess. I'm just gonna quickly give a little recap on the fact that I would say a million of you guys messaged me telling me that Kozas came out with a mini cloud set for their powder, which is my favorite powder on the market. I talk about it all the time and how whenever I'm traveling, I wish I had a mini and they just came out with the minis at Sephora. So I obviously added it to my cart. I will say the shade options, I wish they were a little bit different. They're only offering four shades. I grabbed the shade Comfy, which is actually a shade darker than I would typically go for. So I'll probably have to pick up a lighter shade come winter of the mini, which is a little unfortunate, but this works for me as of now and I will be traveling with it literally this weekend. I just love this stuff so much and um, they must have heard my pleas over the last year because they came out with a mini, thank gore. Also another quick mention, something I didn't have in my wish list video, but something I did end up picking up and wore at Coachella. It's also in my community tab. I have it linked there with a photo that I can pop in so you guys can see what it looks like on the eye. But I picked up the Sephora colorful um, eye crayons and these are also waterproof and and this is in the shade magnetic blue. This is so pretty and these are really, really easy to use if you were looking for like a nice, easy cream eyeshadow stick. I saw this blue on TikTok and I just had to get it for Coachella and it wore all day. It was really pretty and I think this will be super fun in the summer. I just wanted to add that in. I'm not gonna wear it today because I have things to do and I'm not feeling like wearing blue to the vet to go get my dog's anal glands expressed, so. We'll wait on that one. All right, let's get into some lip products, shall we? Because you know Mama bought a lot of lip products in the sale, and I have a lot to say about them. Two really good, and one I'm super disappointed in. Let's talk about what I used to prep my lips today, something that I um, absolutely love and actually ended up getting before the sale while I, was in, while I was in Palm Springs because there was a Sephora right next to our hotel. And I just felt like I had to get it because it was there and it smelled so good. And that is the Pout Preserve Lip Treatment from Ola Hendrickson. I don't typically buy a lot from Ola Hendrickson. They don't send me PR. I don't love their skincare. It's very fragrant. They use a lot of essential oils. But when it comes to lip products, I can be a little bit more lenient with fragrance. And this 
smells like a cream sickle dream sickle which is orange and vanilla mixed it's like my favorite dessert also in the summer so i had to pick it up it's very nice um it's a peptide lip treatment similar to the road lip treatment in ingredients however doesn't leave quite as glossy of a finish i like to use this throughout the day while i'm at my house before bed i don't love it over lip liners type of lip treatment because it does have a little bit of a um like beige undertone to it in the actual tube so i prefer to use like a clear one during the day if I'm going out and about however I love this and the reviews are insane people are absolutely obsessed with it it is let me go ahead and pull up the pricing for you this is $22 also has five stars on Sephora I do recommend it I heard that there is a mineral SPF that goes along with this that I'm interested in trying however I know it also smells very strong so we'll see about that but I definitely would recommend the Pal Preserve. Couple other lip products. We obviously went ham on the um, lip oils. Like, I just love a lip oil. It's just something that is something I've always been interested in. And recently, since all these brands have been coming out with lip oils, I've been diving headfirst into it. Starting with one that I picked up on a whim that I absolutely love from Clarins. This is the Clarins Lip Comforting Hydrating Oil. In the shade chocolate, this is $28. It is expensive. However, this brand won Best of Beauty for 2022 in the lip oil category, and it is very, very nice. Let me tell you something. We're gonna get to this product, which is the Merit Lip Gelés. This shade Mapleton, which is the one that I was most interested in, is what I have on right now, and it's nothing like what it looks in the tube. This is what I wanted it to look like, and this is what it actually looks like. So if you were interested in the Mapleton Lip Gel Lip Oil from Merit, because of that brownie, nudie-looking undertone, you should pick up chocolate from Clarins instead. This is actually more of a terracotta red than it is a, a true brown, which I can totally get behind. I really love this formula. It's got a nice smell to it. It smells like sugary, fruity, you know, it's very comfortable on the lips, looks absolutely beautiful, shiny, works well with lip liners, looks good on top of other lipsticks. And this is an incredibly unique lip oil that I, like shade that I've ever seen. It's very different. It's got that brownish undertone to it. And I don't know if you can see just like in this color, it's just got that like, I wanna say like cherry Coke type of color to it, which is unique, different, love it. Super excited to have this one. It is a yes to me. And again, it's not a new product, but it's new to me, which then leads me into the Merit products, which unfortunately are no. I know, I know. Valentina, add the shock. <gasps> These, my friend, are the Merit lip oils, the new lip gelée shines from Merit. And I hate to tell you that they're a bust. I hate to tell you they're a bust. These are $24 each. They also have a really good review on Sephora, but let's talk about it as someone who I know probably just like me is a makeup collector and likes to have multiple shades of things if they like the formula. And I'm here to tell you, you simply only need one of these because they are all the exact same shade. It's giving Tarte Lip Oils 2.0. If you saw me talk about that, um, Tarte released a bunch of color changing lip oils. They all turned out the exact same color and even though these look incredibly different, they are the exact same color on the lips because they are pH adjusting and no one, no one has marketed that on the website in their advertising. If you look on the website for Sephora, you can see that the doe foots look like they're matching the color inside of the, the oil, but when you really look at it, they're all this hot ass pink color which gives you the indication if you ever see a color like that coming out of a lip oil that looks different, there's pH adjustment in it. So essentially, I'm gonna pop in a little video that I put on my Instagram stories, which if you don't follow me, you should, because that's where I upload all of my tea on products first, right when I get them. It's at the Rudy Berry on Instagram. These swatches are all the same, you guys. I could not believe it, and I was so disappointed because I love Merit, and I was so excited to see a more sheer version of their lip oils, which are amazing. The formula is super nice, feels great on the lips. You only need one, and if you have pH adjusting lip, lip balms, lip oils, then you don't need them and you don't even need one. If you wanna try one out, I would say get Mapleton just for the sheer fact that it might turn out a little bit different from the other ones, but unfortunately they are all the damn same. And if you wanna try a Merit Lip Oil that's maybe gonna be different, like actually different, try their original formulation. Um, I love them all. These are my current favorite shades and they are actually a pigmented lip oil, my favorite shade being Sangria. 
it's an actual different shade of a lip oil than your classic clear that everyone is doing right now with the damn pH adjustment. So I hate to tell you, but I love to tell you because I want to save you money. They are all the same. Okay, I have been talking your little heads off and we are rounding out with three more flops in my category here of my perfumes that I picked up. Unfortunately, these are all going back. Um, and I just want to say with perfumes, I had talked about how these are all going back on my Instagram and a lot of people are like, why are they bad? Like da da da. And the thing about perfume is everybody has their own thing. Everyone has their own scent category that they really like. So am I going to tell you that these are bad? Absolutely not. But they're just not for me and that's okay. Like they might be for you. And if you love these and if you even, some of you gave these to me as recommendations, it's okay if you still like them and I don't like them. We just have different scent profiles that we enjoy. So the first one is Skylar Lime Sands. I was just really curious about the scent of lime in a perfume, but unfortunately this just smells very, very coconutty and a little cheap in my opinion. It kind of is giving just like you're on a beach, which if you like that, you'll really like this. It's just not for me. It's too coconut forward. It's too pina colada. It's very much pina colada. If you like the scent of a pina colada, you will like it. But for me personally, I need something a little bit toned down, which is where these two came in. The reason I picked these up is that they are both skin scents, actually, uh, mostly this one, the Maker Naked. And also this was sold out when I grabbed it, so it has to be a pretty popular scent. Again, it's just not for me. This one smells very, um, I don't know, like, I don't know, gr green, grassy? It smells a little grassy. It says that it's white musk, wet wild orchid. It smells just too grassy for me. Um, if you like a really earthy scent, I think you would like this one. I like notes of certain types of earth in my perfumes, but I don't like it to smell like straight up kind of like grass. Outdoorsy, very floral forward. I prefer a more sweet and citrusy over a uh, earthy floral. So that one was also not for me. That's okay, vibes. And the last one was a recommendation from one of you because I said I liked Dreamsicles and this was your recommendation. And this is 1969 Capri. Also, we'll be sending this one back. Based on the notes, I thought I was gonna absolutely love it. The notes are bitter orange, sweet orange, cardamom, pink pepper, grapefruit, ylang ylang, and white musk. And those sound perfect for me but it's giving, I don't know, like too spa. It smells too much like, like a essential oil spa vibes. Um, I like something that has a little bit more of a sugary undertone to it, I've learned. It's just a little bit too spa, too on the nose. And yeah, I don't know. I think also a big reason why I didn't like any of these was that they smell like any other perfume to me personally. Like I've smelled those smells a million times on people, a little grandma-y as well on these last two. And I just, I don't know, I like something unique if I'm gonna spend my money on a perfume. These two are giving a little bit grandma and then this one is just giving a little too young to pina colada to me. So I will say I got a PR package from uh, Le Mans Gourmand, which is one of my favorite fragrance creators. These are also incredibly inexpensive. If you've seen these bottles, you've probably seen them at Urban Outfitters, but they came out with a skin scent line and it's absolutely incredible. These are my two favorites, 000, which smells like literally, I don't know, like your favorite t-shirt. And then uh, Clementine Bizou, which is more of a citrus. Ugh, these are so good. If you guys like what I like, all three of these from the line, there's also like a more male scented fragrance in this one you will like. I think they're like $18. These were worth more to me than the ones I picked up from Sephora and these are so much cheaper. So to me, it's not about that. It's simply about the unique scent profile, you know? Oh my God, I've been talking for so long. So let's do like a little final wrap up. The yeses of the day, for sure yeses, are these three products. We're giving the lip oil from Clarins, the peptide pout treatment from Ola Henriksen, the concealer from Glowish, and then you already love the maxi of the Kosas powder, pick up the mini. Our maybes right now are the Refi Brow Gel and the Born This Way, as well as, I don't know, maybe the Dream Beam. I'm gonna keep trying it. 
but it's I'm, it's more into the no than it is into the maybes. And then my straight up no's for you are all of those perfumes based on my scent like favorites. The Freck Bronzer and the Merit Lip Oils, which I did not think would be no's and they were. So um, I hope that gave you some indication of if something was in your cart, maybe you've taken it out or if you were interested in something or you just wanted someone to give you the tea on these products. I have your back. I will be traveling this upcoming weekend and next weekend for weddings because Reed is in two weddings back to back. So TBD on videos this week. I know I'm really sorry. I hate to miss a day. I'm trying to get as much done and given to you guys before I leave as possible, but we shall see. I will definitely be uploading shorts regardless. I'm also always on Instagram and TikTok if you want to check in with me there day to day. And I will see you guys in the next video really soon.